Good morning. It is, I don't know, the sun's not up yet. I'm Heidi with Modern Bygone. I have a different coffee cup this week. And I am back in my workroom. It's a little messy, but I'll clean it up later today. And I wanted to check in with you and see how you're doing this week. <clears throat> So for my progress this week on the basics, basics, basics course from the Knitting Guild Association, I have, last week I told you that I had finished swatches one and two and that I just needed to block them and that I needed to start swatch three, but it was using a new increase and so I had to research that increase to earn it. And so I did all of those things. So swatch number one is done and blocked. It's still on my blocking board because um, after having my preliminary swatch not dry out all the way, I didn't want to risk it. So I've left it on um, almost a week, I think five days. So it's on there, it's feeling pretty dry. I'll probably take it off this evening. Swatch number two is also on the blocking board, though I'm not real happy with the shape that it ended up in. I don't know how I got this curve going on here. And I'm also not real thrilled with my Knit One Pearl One rib. I really struggle with the tension on Knit One Pearl One. They end up wonky. So I'm going to pull these off the board later today. We'll see how this looks once it's no longer on the blocking board and I'll decide at that point if I need to restitch this one before for my projects. And then swatch number three. Is in my knitting bag. Swatch number three is definitely differently shaped. This one starts out much, much smaller, and then you increase with right leaning and left leaning increases. And so like you can see some of mine are like right there. But I really like the this new increase for me because it's pretty invisible. It, it blends right in with the stitching. It isn't as, it doesn't leave obvious stitches like with the knit in the front and back. You end up with a little pearl bump on the front of your knitting and um, you have to be real careful about how you're going to hide that within the stitches. Otherwise you can see it so you don't want to necessarily use it on the smooth side of stockinette or else you'll have these little random pearl bumps but this one this one did a really nice job does a really nice job of hiding within the stitches you don't really see it my left leaning increases i do have a little bit of a longer leg i'm not sure if you can really see how long that one is there and then there's another one right there um from the videos that i've watched and from the research that i've done that's a, a common thing and there were some strategies to try and make that a little less visible when you're blocking it so I'm gonna continue on with that one I think I have like an inch of stockinette to do on that one and then um, I'm gonna see if I can't get those long legs of the left leaning lifted increase <laughs> to block out so that it isn't quite so obvious of that weird long leg. Um, if you're interested in me doing a video of these new increases that I've learned, uh, let me know down in the comments below and I definitely can do that. And um, yeah, the, the right leaning lifted increase was fairly easy. I didn't have any trouble with that one. <clears throat> the left leaning, left leaning lifted increase was a little more tricky just because 
you have to knit the stitch off of your left needle and onto your right needle and then you have to lift from below that stitch and I wanted to lift like right here but you actually had to lift one more stitch below and so um and that definitely didn't give you that invisible increase so it took a little practice my color block tank is coming along nicely I've got a few inches worked on that one I really haven't knit very much this week um I've knit every day but sometimes only for maybe 10 or 15 minutes it's been it's been a very stressful week our school district is in progress of moving back to fully remote so we've been figuring out what that's going to look like for the teachers and the staff and the students and um, trying to get our students ready to go back to full remote learning, make sure that they can skillfully access all of our online resources and remember what our schedule should be when we're working online and things like that. So it's been, it's been a very busy week when it comes to work. Um, let's see. Hmm. I got two new books this week, which I'm super excited about. I started reading a sample of this one. It's No Idle Hands, The Social History of American Knitting. I started reading a sample of it uh, through Amazon to download the sample. And then I was really interested in the information that was in it and everything so I just went ahead and went and bought the book and I had no idea that it was massive um I mean not massive by <coughs> comparison to a lot of books but massive for a knitting book especially a history knitting book but it's super interesting um it is not it is not written like a novel would be written. It doesn't flow nicely like a story that you're reading. Um, but it has a lot of references to original documents, diaries, notes, and letters from the original people. And so it's really interesting to read about how needlework and knitting and handwork really was such a huge part of daily life in um, America back to when the first pilgrims started coming over and uh, exploring the North America. I would really love to find some resources on um, Native American knitting. So if anybody has some ideas for me for where to even start looking for uh, Native American resources for the history of weaving and knitting um, and needlework within the Native American cultures. I would I would love to learn more about that because I know that it was there and I know that they have they produced some beautiful beautiful work and I would love to learn more about it. Um, the other book that I got was 99 increases and decreases step-by-step -step methods. Um, there's this Judy Durant has a couple of books out there. She's got increases, decreases, cable right, cable left, cast on, cast off. Um, and they're just these little reference books. They're, they're spiral bound on the inside. So they actually do lay nice and flat when you're working from them. Um, they're really great. I really enjoy her books, her instruction books for like this. Um, they got some really great illustrations and it's lots of nice big pictures. There's not a lot of extra fluff you know of isn't it pretty it's really just here's the information that you need and here's what it looks like and you know here's some great diagrams of how to do that so they weren't that expensive 
um, I think I ordered this one online. I think I've got one or two of her other ones maybe, but really great resources. They're nice and small. Um, this one actually fits right in my knitting basket that travels with me everywhere. It fits right in there. So it's really nice to have a nice little resource that's just focused on increases and decreases. I will probably be on the lookout for more of these reference books. I think that she does a great job of describing them in a nice and simple format of here's the information, here's some really great pictures, diagrams, things like that. Um, we're headed into Thanksgiving, so I have today to teach and then I will have a small group of students to teach on Monday and then our district is moving to full remote learning again because of the increase of COVID cases within our communities and our, co our county. So um, this workroom behind me will start looking a little more like a classroom again. Um, I'll have my whiteboard and whatnot back up and so we will get through this year and we will move forward and I'm over it. <laughs> I don't like teaching online. I want to work with my students in the classroom. I can teach online. I can be effective as a teacher for remote learning. I am capable but it is not the best situation for our students and it frustrates me that our students who are low income and have two working parents who cannot afford to take the days off and stay home with their kids to be able to help them with school Child care is a huge struggle and um, I teach sixth grade so I, I teach 11 and 12 year olds and many of them end up responsible for their siblings throughout the day and they're busy helping their younger brothers and sisters to try and help them do their schoolwork and then they struggle to do their own schoolwork. And I know that as the students get older, middle school and high school, that pressure only increases. So I'm sad that we are moving back to remote. I understand it. Um, I'm not against it. I know that for the safety of our communities, and to slow the spread of COVID-19, we do need to move back to this model. But I'm not happy about it. So, anyways, it is Friday and the sun has still not come up. And I am going to drink my coffee. And I am going to knit and I'm going to get myself centered again and then I'll go back in and I will teach for my last in-person day of 2020 with my small group B because we have we're working in hybrid right now so we have two students we have group A who attend Monday Tuesday and group B who attend Thursday Friday so I will go in today and I will have my last day in person with my group B and then Monday will be my last day in person with group A and hopefully the new year of 2021 will bring with it a reduction in cases and maybe some more 
options to be able to keep us all safe and keep our students safe. And then we'll be back in class again because that's, that's where we belong. So I hope you have a wonderful week. I hope you have a wonderful socially distanced Thanksgiving with the family that you can be with. I hope that all of yours are well and that we can find things to be thankful for for this 2020 Thanksgiving. Have a good week.